As I mentioned a couple of months ago, one of the projects I was interested in coming back to and revisiting was my heart mechanism, which I originally started working on about two years ago. So as I've been developing it and trying different design ideas, I ended up coming up with two main ideas and then from there there's some different variations on those two things. So the first variation is this simplified DC motor based heart mechanism. And this can use either a battery pack or a wired connection, um, depending on your application. Um, the other design is a servo-based um, mechanism, which because of the power requirements and also the space inside the design, um, it can't be run off batteries, um, so it does use a wired connection. Um, both of these designs use a potentiometer, which is mounted either on the mechanism itself or on the power source as a way to adjust the speed of the heartbeat and both of them feature a jacket um, in the simple DC motor based design this is like a plush jacket that I sewed together as a cheap alternative to silicone um, inspired by my early designs uh, where I used a sock to evaluate the motion and then the other design is using a silicone jacket um, which is something that I sculpted and cast in silicone and finally painted I'm going to be taking you through how to make all of these different designs and I'm going to be releasing the files for free um, for all the 3D printed parts. Um, but first of all, I was thinking to myself that maybe one of the things that was lacking from my recent eye mechanism series is that I didn't really go over much of the development process and one of the things I've always liked is being able to show the mistakes that I've made and the way that I overcame certain challenges. So in this video I'm going to try and take you through the development process with um, all the different variations of my heart. On my Patreon page I actually documented the entire development of this project from start to finish and that was something that I really enjoyed doing and the people on there seemed to enjoy too so I thought I would bring this to my channel and give you a taste of what my development process looks like. So I started by looking back at the original heart mechanism design that I released a, a long time ago. This was at a time when I was only really starting to get into 3D printing properly as a way to make sort of moving mechanical things. This was quite early on while I was at university so there's maybe still some learning I needed to do. The actual design is quite structurally unstable. I, I used some twisted copper wire as a way to make linkages between all the different panels of the heart and honestly it was a pretty shoddy way to test it. The, the different wire uh, linkages would kind of rub against each other and um, just in general it's a pretty bad design but the main concept of it was still relevant and that was that I was using four bar linkages to be able to move the heart panels in a way that meant that the entire heart mechanism sort of expanded and contracted evenly and because it was coming from a motor that rotated with a continuous speed it meant that the heart beated in a sort of rhythmical cyclic motion and this looked fairly organic. So then I began to test new design ideas for this current design and for that I wanted more than just these four panels, I wanted the panels to actually part to sort of stretch apart the silicone and I didn't think that one panel on each side would really fulfill that. I split all the panels in half and tried to design the mechanism so they'd actually spread apart which would make the silicones look more like it was sort of expanding rather than just moving. At first I thought about trying to design a mechanism where I could take the output from the motor and actuate both sides of the panel evenly and I started to sort of test a prototype of this design but then I quite quickly realised it was a little bit over complicated and there would have been a simple way to do this. So I scrapped that idea um, and actually found a type of motor which is quite commonly available um, which has a dual shaft, um, so it has a shaft in the top of the bottom and rather than having a sort of linkage to actuate both sides of the panels at the same time I would just have a rotating wheel on the top and bottom of the motor and then I would just have two separate linkages on either side of the heart to be able to actuate it evenly and as I went in to test this design it does seem to be really sort of robust and reliable even though there was lots of sort of adjustments I had to make along the way I thought really hard about what motion the heart should have um, and it's obviously kind of difficult to find reference for what a real beating heart should look like. Um, you can look at sort of anatomical references where you can see how the blood flows in and out of the heart um, but then there's some videos that I've seen 
um, with sort of heart transplants and whatnot. And seeing actual hearts, they actually seem to be a lot less um, predictable in the motion. It just kind of looks like a, a big bit of meat just kind of flapping about. But one of the main things I got from looking at the references was that the vast majority of the movement in the heart is in the bottom bit. Whereas in the original design, I had two panels for the top parts, which in my mind I was thinking that's like the, the left and right atrium. Um, but looking at actual references of real hearts, the vast majority of the movement seems to be in the lower portion. So in my DC motor based design, I decided to scrap the top and bottom movement and just simplify it to the, to the two main chambers of the heart which I believe are called the ventricles. I think the main weak point is the motor itself. So from what I've been able to gather, these um, 90 degree shaft gear motors were originally designed for Biobugs, um, which is a toy that used to be out and then also used in RoboSapien. Um, so I think the design is pretty reliable and robust, um, but now obviously the ones that are easy to get are just kind of like imitation ones on Amazon. So but I think the ones that I've ended up with are a little bit sort of weaker than they meant to be. Um, and I did have some problem with some of the gears stripping uh, when I overstressed one of the motors. Um, but that does seem to be the main weak point in this design is just that um, the actual mechanism um, that I have 3D printed and built is pretty tough but the motor itself is the weak point. And at this stage in the design, I was very skeptical that this motor would be strong enough to be able to actuate the silicone. As it turns out, it was actually able to actuate the silicone skin better than the plush skin, um, at least with the Platzil Gel 00 that I used. So I thought to myself that I would need to design something with stronger motors. Um, and I also thought that the beating could be improved upon. Um, because a real heart doesn't really just cycle like this design, it actually expands slowly and contracts quickly and that's something that I was eager to try and develop. So rather than let that design go to waste, I thought based on my experiments with fabric and socks and stuff to try and see how the mechanism moves, I thought that having like a plush heart make it made out of like a sock-like fabric would look pretty cool and compared to the cost of casting silicone you know it costs pretty much nothing i would say that the motor design does look really good at high speeds because at those kind of speeds you wouldn't be able to notice the difference in the speed of the heart expanding and contracting and it would just be a sort of really fast pumping um, so it looks good at those speeds but at low speeds it doesn't really look right so then based on wanting to have that slow expansion and fast contraction with the heart design I decided to design a heart mechanism to use three servos and then I would be able to program any sort of motion I want. So I originally designed it with MG90S servos in mind because I have a ton of them and I know that they're quite easy to get. I was very worried that the MG90S's wouldn't be able to actuate the silicone um, so I ended up switching to a much stronger servo that has the same form factor as the MG90S um, but as I mentioned the silicone was a lot easier to move than I expected so I haven't actually tested it with MG90S's in the silicone skin um, but I think it's fairly likely to work. The design has two motors at the bottom which actuate the main chambers of the heart and then it has one motor at the top which just kind of follows the motion of the two main heart chambers. I designed it to have space for an Arduino Micro and PCA 90 something boards that I normally use. I also wanted to be able to fit a battery in there but I couldn't really find one that would be small enough and have enough charge to be able to last in there and I had to really think hard about the application um, so with the plush heart that's more of a toy or more of a just sort of novelty item that's something you would want a battery in because you want to be able to take it around and sort of pull it out to I don't know make people laugh or entertain people whereas the servo based silicone jacket heart mechanism is more appropriate for like a film or some kind of production as like a special effects thing so because the wire comes out of the back it's very easy to just sort of hide it up your sleeve or, or wherever else so that's why I decided that the plush heart should be the one that has the battery mechanism and then the servo heart 
really don't have any need for a battery. It would be a nice idea, it'd be cool to be able to just whip out the silicone heart just to show it off to people, but realistically um, it does make the design a lot simpler and more reliable that I can just plug it in. So then quite an interesting part of the servo mechanism was the Arduino code. Um, so as I mentioned I wanted to get a slow expansion and then a fast contraction. So in order to do this I I used a step function which I made with the Arduino code by having a time period which is set by the potentiometer. So that just means that by twisting the potentiometer knob you control the um, the length of the time period of one entire beat cycle and then based on the overall time period that you set with a potentiometer the code then takes a percentage of that so maybe like 50% to start with and uses a sine wave to make that slow expansion so it starts relatively quickly and then levels off to be to have like almost stopped moving entirely when the heart's at maximum expansion and then the step function changes to be like zero like instantly so as soon as the fit heart's finished expanding it then contracts as fast as it can and resets the cycle to the start um, i also put a little offset between the two sides of the heart because if you look at any references that seems to be the way that the hearts move and then there's a big panel on the top which as i mentioned just follows the motion of the bottom main heart chambers i'm not certain that that's the best solution and this also would be really easy to change if anyone wanted to sort of experiment with that step function to see what different sort of motions they could get. It should be quite easy, I think. So I wired up the design so that the Arduino Micro can be powered through the V plus pin of the servo driver board. I'm not 100% sure this is the best solution, so hopefully someone will tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like the input resistance on the Arduino Micro is enough so that by powering it through the V+, plus, no worry of it drawing too much current and damaging it. I also tested it out with some AAA batteries, um, which is the, the type of batteries that the DC motor heart mechanism uses, and it actually seems to work fine, surprisingly that's enough power to drive it, not a problem. So then I went on to making the jackets. So the fabric jacket went pretty well, I started off by um, using scraps of fabric and just tacking them together to make a sort of a sort of prototype of the design and then I drew around the edges of each piece of fabric and photocopied them and traced around them in Inkscape to make the pattern. I don't think the pattern's perfect, I really don't know very much about sewing so this was a fairly new thing for me. Um, I was able to borrow a sewing machine to sew the final thing but based on my pattern I did need to make sort of minor adjustments from the pattern to be able to perfect the shape of it. If there's anyone out there who's uh, actually competent with sewing and wants to wants to help me design a better sewing pattern then that would be really cool. Get in contact with me if that's the case. One of the issues that I encountered when I went from the initial test to the final uh, jacket using the pattern was that the zip um, that I put in the back prevents the fabric from stretching when you're taking the heart in and out of the jacket so this means that it's a lot harder to squeeze the mechanism in um, than it was with the prototype which didn't have a zip it was just a hole. I don't think there's actually space in the pattern to have a zip that's long enough to be able to squeeze it in and out without having to leave a hole at the top so the fabric can stretch which isn't ideal but didn't seem to be too much of a problem but in any case I did manage to get three fairly decent fabric jackets out of this pattern um, so it does seem to be fairly reliable so then as for the silicone heart jacket I think I'll make a video just separately on the silicone jacket because um, cause there's quite a lot of arty stuff which I know not everyone's interested in but I seriously was doubting myself as I was making that. I had a, a big feeling that it was going to go wrong. Just because I'm not so experienced with casting and it does seem to cost a fortune. I started out with one kilogram of silicone to make the overall mould. It turned out that was like nowhere near enough. I had to buy another kilogram um, and pour that on top of the original mould. Thankfully it stuck great so I didn't have any problems with it separating. Uh, in the final design I definitely did end up with some bubbles but they weren't really noticeable and I was actually so surprised by how good the final silicone casting came out um, but there will be a full video on that coming up soon. But just to give a brief overview you have a 3D printed insert piece over which the original design was sculpted that was then put into a box and had a big silicone mould made around it. The insert was then taken off, all the clay was stripped off from it and then that insert was used back into the big mould to make a skin 
in the exact shape of the clay that was around the original inset. I don't know if you noticed that little sticker that was on the um, insert. Can't believe how durable it was to survive all that. Well, I wonder where you can get a cool sticker like that. On an unrelated note, I would like to give a really big thank you to my patrons. On my Patreon page, I'm posting very frequent updates with projects that are in progress that are quite a while ahead of the videos that have been released. Obviously, there's quite a lot of time between me actually making the projects and then the videos coming out, so... Um, on the Patreon I'm showing behind the scenes the projects that I've got in progress at that time. I'm also giving out some very cool stickers. Without further ado, here is a massive thank you to Captain Awesome, Ola Sander, Aaron Haley, Aaron Nance, Alexander Kokshirov, Andrew Pusey, Armin Unk, Christopher LaRoche, Daryl Barney, David Churchman, David Gentry, Eric Farrow, Ensteru Stratemans, Fitsnips, Fly Mario, Geek Smithing, Geir Sira, Greg Tylin, Ian James, Jason Moore, Jeffrey Warren Park, Jason Souza, Maker Project Lab, Martin Drake, Michael, Michael Shepard, Mike Potter, Ole Johnson, Paul Lopes, Pepe Harmon Yemi, Rick Gordon, Robert R. Wells, Sergi, Sid Taylor, Simon Hershey, Spider Math Matt Norman, Stephen Harris, Werner Schultz, and William Winstead. The next video will be how to make the battery operated. Um, DC motor based hat and the fabric jacket. So I hope to see you in the next video.